I'm Adrian. Today I'm going to do a little bit of a tutorial on playing over rhythm changes. I've done a little bit of this stuff. You can check out some of my other videos. I'm personally getting better at this stuff the more I do it and probably will be working on it for the rest of my life. Um, and in fact, I was working on it today. Um, just a quick note, not in my studio today. Don't have the microphone and everything, so apologies if the sound's not quite as good. Um, I also didn't do my hair or wear a hat today, which I think most of my videos usually have one or the other. But you'll survive. I know I will, maybe. Uh, but anyway, I was practicing this just before, and I thought this would make a really good lesson. I'm like, I mean, a really this is going to be a great lesson if you're just getting into this stuff. Um, this is okay. So if you're just getting into jazz and you're learning all this stuff, hopefully, you know, there has to be some implied knowledge there. You're going to have to probably know a little bit of theory. So I'm relying on that from um, your from uh, your point of view. Um, but basically, I was practicing my arpeggios. Uh, B flat, I was playing B flat rhythm changes, so B flat 7, G7, C7, F, or uh, diatonically, which means without basically doing a slightly different key in every chord, you could look at it from B flat, G minor, C minor 7, F dominant 7. Now what I was doing was arpeggiating, so I'm going to quickly show you how to do that. So if you're a beginner, um, uh, you know, just simple arpeggios are a great way to begin. So B flat, and then we're going a G. We're thinking G minor coming backwards. Really, we're just thinking B flat. B flat, G minor, basically the same chords. So what we're going to look at is how we go from the basics and make it more exciting. So C minor arpeggio. So that's the fifth fret, by the way. Fifth, eighth, six. And then F7. So remember the good old D7 chord? There's an F7 chord. Okay. Now that's the basic. That's the, the basic way to arpeggiate that. If we want to make that sound more bebop, think um, obviously Charlie Christian, even Django Reinhardt, very, very, you know, a lot of bebop ideas in his playing. Um, yeah, he's fantastic. So um, if you want to make that sound a lot more interesting, let's look at how we can do that. Now, instead of playing, we're going to play that B flat, we're going to keep that as it is, but instead of playing the G minor coming back, let's look at how we can change that and do it as a G dominant 7, which is something we you might be taught pretty early on in jazz, is that a lot of these chords we can play as dominant 7s. So let's do that with the arpeggio. So I'm going to play a B natural instead of a B flat for the G. Okay, so if we went back to G, um, we're going to go up to the B, which is the third of the G, and we're going B, G, F, D. So just a G7. Start Not starting from the G, obviously, starting from B. So now we've, played, we've, we've outlined a G7. Now, it actually sounds great if, if you're playing with another guitar player and they are playing G minor. You're going to get away with that. Um, or if you're playing with a bass player, they're going to be walking and doing, doing all kinds of stuff. So... Even on its own, it sounds great. And a general rule, if it sounds good on its own, it's probably going to sound good over other things. Um, you listen to Wes Montgomery or Tal Farlow and any of those guys, and their licks sound awesome on their own. Very important. That's that's melody, um, I guess you, you would say. Okay, so the next thing we do, let's stick with the C minor for now. C, E flat, G, B flat, C minor 7. But that F7... Instead of playing F natural, we're going to play an F sharp, which well, or a G flat, and that's going to create the sound of an F7 flat 9. So that when my eyebrow goes up, that's the best note. Ah, oh, that was both. It means it was a doubly good note. Okay. thinking too hard. Now, a really good tip is if you can't catch every one of those chords when you're playing, it doesn't really matter. If, let's say, if you just if you just look for that one cool note, this is something I really emphasize, and I hear Django do it a lot, out of nowhere he just grabs that cool note, and it's not necessarily part of an arpeggio 
of, of that F7 flat 9, but being aware of those really cool notes like that one um, is easy because you can just look at it from B flat and you can just say, well, in the shape, we've got this note here. If we're coming back to a B flat, grab this one, etc. You can really break it down just from a, a major scale. But um, that's all I really have time for today. So just to em uh, emphasize that again, practice your arpeggios outlining uh, outline your arpeggios, set that backwards. And then make little alterations to them and, they, and you can get some really cool sounds. So, yeah. Man, I really can't do this when I think we're in, in on a video. If I've got someone else there watching, it's, it's more fun. It's weird talking to a computer. Anyway. Uh, but I'm not. I'm talking to all you. So I hope you really enjoyed the video. And um, I know I went a little over five minutes. But um, yeah, um, go away and practice that. And if you've got any questions, fire away. And thanks for watching. Subscribe too would be cool. And share it. Or send me money. Chocolate's not so good because they melt. Anyway, I'm going. Bye.